In this video, we will solve linear equations in one variable. So when we solve linear equations in one variable, the whole purpose, of course, is to get our variables to one side and our constants, that's the numbers that don't have variables, to the other side. And as you can see, we've gone straight to more difficult questions here. So let's jump right in. Um, if you can understand how to do these, obviously you'll understand how to do the less difficult questions. So when I'm dealing with questions like this that see how we have parentheses, the problem with parentheses is that I can't add and subtract things that are inside parentheses. So my very first step is to get everything out of the parentheses. So I'm going to bring that x straight down, but this 4 is being multiplied by both values inside. So that's going to give me a plus 4x and a minus 20. Pay attention to those signs. And on the right side, 4x minus 8. Now from here, and again, you can draw that wall in the middle, and the wall just reminds you that whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. But before I start adding and subtracting from one side or the other, I always try to simplify. So here, we can see on the left side, I have x and 4x, which are like terms that are on the same side of the equal sign. Notice I also have a 4x on this side, but it's not on the same side as the other ones. So those aren't considered uh, things that I can combine yet. I'm going to have to do some inverse operations. So x plus 4x gives me 5x. Everything else stays exactly the same. Now my next step is always to get the x's to one side of the equation. So some people start with the constants. I always start with the x's or any variable that you happen to have. So I'm going to choose to move this 4x. I don't want the 4x on the right, so I'm going to subtract it. Now if I subtract it from the right side of the wall, I have to subtract from the left side of the wall. And that gives me 1x, or just x, bring down my minus 20, bring down my minus 8. And now I'm just going to undo minus 20 by adding 20 to each side. That gives me x equals 12 because a negative 8 and positive 20 make 12. Keep in mind that I could take that 12 and plug it back in. Every time I see an x up here, I could plug in the 12. I could verify that each side of that equation does, in fact, equal the other side. But I'm not going to do that for the sake of time. But please feel free. For my second, I'm going to do it the same way. So. Again, I'm keeping the 2x the same. I'm taking minus 3 times 2x, so minus 6x, minus 3 times 2, so minus 6. On the right side, I keep my 1. I have a minus 5 times 4, that's minus 20x, and a minus 5 times 3, that's minus 15. So co most common mistake is people who forget to distribute that negative. Again, before I start adding and subtracting from one side or the other, I need to combine like terms. So on the left side, 2x and minus 6x combine to minus 4x. And on the right side, I have a negative 20x, but then I have a 1, a positive 1, and a minus 15, which gives me negative 14. So now I'm in the same place I was on my previous question, where I have an x on each side. I want to get all of the x's to one side. So I want to do something about this minus 20. I'm going to add 20 because that's the opposite thing. And notice I'm only doing one thing per side or per step. So I'm not trying to do the 6 or the 14 on the same step, just one step at a time. Negative 4 plus 20 is 16x. Keep my minus 6. Keep my minus 14. Then I'm going to add 6 to each side because I'm trying to get x by itself. And in terms of de uh, deciding which step to do next, you start on the side with the x and furthest away. So notice I got rid of that minus 6 first. And now I've got a 16x and a negative 8. And now how do I undo 16 that's being multiplied by x? I, of course, divide by 16. So my final answer turns into negative 18 6, which is negative 1 half, or as a decimal, negative 0.5. In terms of decimals and fractions, it's OK to leave it as a fraction. It's better. You can turn it into a decimal as long as it's a nice decimal like 0.5, not if it's a decimal like 0.3 repeating. So I wanted to go through at least one decimal and at least one fraction question with you and maybe give you some strategies that you can use to solve these. 
So the first thing I'm going to do on the decimal question is go ahead and distribute that 0.2 because even if you choose to use the strategy, um, which is totally fine, you still want to not have any parentheses. So I'm going to distribute the 0.2 and again feel free to use your calculator. That gives me 1p and 0.2 times minus 8 is 1.6. Keep in mind that those signs don't change. Now if I want to use the new strategy, which you don't have to do, you can just continue solving just as it is from here, which is what I'm going to do. But if I choose to use the strategy, the strategy says look at the decimal places and how many you have. So notice each of my decimals has only one decimal place and that's the tenth place. So if I wanted to, I could use my strategy to take everything times 10. So if I take 0.6 times 10, that actually gives me 6p. So notice no more decimal. 1.3 times 10 is 13. 1 times 10 is 10. And 1.6 times 10 is 16. So I can solve it. I can solve this equation or I can solve this equation and I should end up with the same answer. So let's go ahead and do it with the decimal and then maybe we'll go through it real quick with no decimals as well. So the first thing I would do here is to get all of the p's to one side which is what we always like to do minus 1p. That gives me negative 0.4p minus 1.3 equals negative 1.6. I add 1.3 to each side to get negative 0.4p and negative 0.3. I divide each side by negative 0.4 and I get p equals, and if I reduce that, that's actually a fraction of 3 fourths or 0.75. So that worked just fine. If I were to do the same thing with the equation I've written in green, Notice it's going to really look exactly the same. I'm going to get 4p minus 13 equals negative 16. I'm adding 13, so the advantage here is that I just don't have any decimals, so maybe it's a little less complicated. But notice when I get to the end, um, if I remember to keep the negative on the 4, <laughs> Yeah, don't be like me, keep your negatives. Then I get negative 3 over negative 4, which is 3 fourths or 0.75. So we're really going to get the same thing either way, assuming we remember our signs correctly. Um, so just whichever way works for you, keep in mind that I took it times 10 because there was one decimal place. If I had a decimal with two decimal places, that's the hundredths place, so I would take everything times 100, etc. The, I am going to use the strategy on the second one, and the strategy on the second one is to find the least common denominator. And so I'm looking at the numbers of 3 and 6 and 2 and saying what's the smallest number 3, 6, and 2 I'll go into. So hopefully it's obvious that that number is 6. If not, keep in mind you can start writing multiples of, four, of 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, etc. Multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, etc. Multiples of 6, 6, 12, 18, etc. And what I'm looking for is the first number that I see in all three, which of course is the 6. So why is that important? Because what I want to do is I want to take everything times 6. And what that's going to do for me is to get rid of the fractions. So this strategy is called clearing fractions. You can certainly do it the other way, which is to, you know, solve as normal and change denominators as needed. I think this is easier. So when I'm doing it this way, I'm looking at the 6 and the 3. And remember, this is like 6 over 1, so I'm just reducing a fraction. 6 on top and a 3 on bottom, I can reduce to 1 and 2. So that gives me 2 times 2 times x, which gives me 4x. I'm going to switch colors to make sure we're clear. Um, here I've got a 6 on the bottom and a 6 on the top. Those go away completely, so I have a minus times 5 times x, so minus 5x. Here I have a minus 3 times 6, which is minus 18. I didn't have to reduce on that one because there was no fraction. Here I've got a 2 on the bottom and a 6, which reduces to 1 and 3. So I have 1 times 3 times x, or 3x. And then minus 5 times 6 is minus 30. 
and now this question is pretty straightforward and I don't have any of those pesky fractions. So let's combine like terms. 4x and minus 5x is negative x. On the right side, nothing changed. Now I'm going to subtract 3x from each side. That gives me negative 4x minus 18 equals negative 30. A lot of negatives here. I'm adding 18 to each side to give me negative 4x and negative 12. And when I divide negative 4 by negative 12, I get positive 3. And keep in mind, on any of these, I can take my final answer and plug it back in to verify that each side of the equation is equal to the other side. Now in general, I'm going to try to make these videos shorter, but this is so important and I didn't want to split this into multiple videos. So yes, this is a little bit longer, but I do want to point out that when I get to the end of a video, I typically give you a question where I have a blue star. And what that means is I want you to press pause and I want you to try those questions yourself to see if you understood the topics that we've talked about. So if you would, press pause now, do both of these questions, and once you're done, press play, and I'll go through the questions with you. So again, the first one's pretty straightforward because we don't have any fractions, so I'm just going to use my distributive property. I get 5v minus 20, and then keep the minus 2, distribute my 2, to 2v plus 14. Notice the 2 does not distribute to the 3 because the 3 was not in parentheses, so I just rewrite it. Now I'm going to combine like terms on each side. So on the left side, I have 5v minus 22. And on the right side, I have 2v, and I'm combining 14 and minus 3 to get 11. Now I want to get variables to one side, so I'm going to subtract the 2v. Notice I'm just doing one step per line. Don't get overzealous. And then I'm going to add 22 to each side. My handwriting's getting a little messy. 3v equals 33. And then I'm going to get just 1v. So of course I'm going to divide because that's the opposite of multiplication by 3. And I find that v is 11. And again, you can plug that back in to check your work. On the next one, I have to find the least common denominator. So looking at 2, 4, and 3, 12 is the lowest number that those go into. And if you're not sure how to do that, you can just look at what are multiples of 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, etc. Look at multiples of 4, 4, 8, 12, 16. Look at multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12. You're looking for the first number that appears in all three of them. You probably knew that already, but I just want to make sure I'm being complete. Again, I'm taking every single thing times 12, including that one that's there by itself. So on this one, I'm going to end up with, this one's a little harder, 6 and then times y plus 5. Here I'm going to reduce and get a 3, so I have a minus 3 times y minus 2. On the right side, I have reducing to 4, so I have 4 times the numerator, and then plus 12. So this one's going to make us work a little bit harder, but now we just have values with parentheses, so we know what to do there. So I'm going to distribute 6y plus 30 minus 3y, and be careful on this one, I have a minus and a minus, so when I multiply those, minus 3 times minus 2 is actually plus 6. Here I have 4y plus 28 plus 12, and of course my next step is to combine like terms. So on the left side, uh, 6y and minus 3y gives me 3y, and plus 30 and plus 6 gives me plus 36. On the right side, no other y's, so just a 4y, but the 12 and the 28 combine to give me 40. Now from here, of course, I'm going to get all of my y's to one side. Let's go ahead and get them to the left side. I do that most often. So even though, whoops, even though I'm going to end up with a negative, that's okay with me. I subtract 4y to get negative 1y plus 36 and then 40. 
I'm going to subtract 36 because again we start on the side with the y furthest away and undo plus 36 by subtracting it. That gives me negative 1y. That doesn't look like a y. Let me try again. Negative 1y equals 4. And then, of course, I can divide by negative 1 to get positive 1y equals negative 4.